right. All right. Second Kings chapter number 22. You've been standing if you can this morning. Reading of the word of God. If you have it, say I got it. Second Kings chapter 22. Verse number one. Familiar character here. Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 30 and one years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Jedidah. I was going to say Jedidah. 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 Anyway, it's in there. The daughter of Adiah of Bosca. I read that five times this morning and thought I had it right every time. All right. Anyway, verse number two, and he did that which was right. Speaking of Josiah, he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord and walked in the way of David, his father, and turned not aside to the right hand or to the left. Flip over to chapter 23, the same book. Verse number three, also speaking of Josiah, the Bible says, and the king stood by a pillar and made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all their heart, all their soul to perform the words of this covenant that were written in this book and all the people stood to the covenant. Father, I love you this morning. I thank you once again for your word. Thank you, Lord, for your spirit that has been with us in the house. Lord, I pray that you would anoint me for just a few minutes this morning that I can deliver my heart, give us liberty in the preaching, liberty in the altars, and we'll give you the praise. In Jesus' name we pray. The church said, Amen. Amen. You may be seated this morning in the presence of the Lord. I want to preach today on it ran in the family until it ran into me. It ran in the family until it ran into me. I was studying this message, and I've, I've been studying now for several months on this. Every time I would see something, it would trigger my thought process back to this topic. I was reading a book here the other day, one of the books I've got by Max Lucado, great author, and uh, he began to write in his book about a man by the name of Stephen. It's a German man, and he told the story of Stephen. He didn't give his last name, but he said that he makes his living, or he can tell you about trees. He makes his living from trees. This man, Stephan, inherited a German forest that has been in his family for 400 years. The trees that uh, Mr. Stephan harvests were planted 180 years ago by his great-grandfather. The trees or the seeds that he plants the trees that he is planting won't be ready to harvest for market until his great-grandchildren are born. And so he's just part of a chain. You understand that? Every generation, this is what Mr. Stephan said, he said every generation must make a choice. They can either spoil or they can plant. They can either rape the landscape and get rich or they can care for the landscape, harvest only what is theirs, and leave an investment for their children. Stephen harvests the seeds sown by men he never knew. Stephen sows seeds to be harvested by descendants that he will never see. He's dependent upon the past, but he's responsible for the future. Are you with me? Amen. He's just part of a chain. Amen. He's just like us. We're children of the past, but we're parents of the future. We're recipients of work that have been done by those that come before us, but we're working for those that will come after us. All right. Choices, don't you hear me today? Choices made today will return to you generations later. Amen. Make wise choices and choose God's way. Amen. Joshua 24 and 15, a very familiar scripture, he said this, if it seem evil unto you to serve the Lord, then choose you this day whom ye will serve. And he said, but as for me and my house, 
we will serve the Lord. Here I read today about a man, or a boy rather, by the name of Josiah. He took the throne when he was eight years old. He inherited a throne that was, uh, uh, it, it was a it was terrible time because of his, his father and his grandfather. The crown uh, was tarnished, if you please. The temple was, was just a mess. Uh, the law, the book of the law was lost, and people were worshiping whatever they desired to worship. But by the end of the reign of Josiah, 31 years, he had rebuilt the temple. The idols had been destroyed, and the law of God had once again been elevated to its rightful place. Amen. Amen. I believe there's a message in that right there, first of all, to realize that the only way that we can reclaim things that were once the, uh, uh, of a rightful way is for the, the temple to be rebuilt. Amen. The altar to be rebuilt. The idols to be done away with. And once again, let the book be exalted in our life. Amen. If you're having problems today, I can tell you how to fix your problems in your life. If you'll turn it over to Jesus, get the temple right. Get the idols and the things that are separating you from God out of the way and let the book be exalted in your life. That's a good recipe for success. Can the church say amen? amen. That's a good recipe for success. Josiah had a grandfather. His name was Manasseh. And he was a ruthless king, very ruthless. Matter of fact, the Bible says in 2 Kings chapter 21 that Manasseh shed innocent blood very much till he had filled Jerusalem from one end to another. Beside his sin wherewith he made Judas, Judah to sin in doing that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. Manasseh did not live for God, but the Bible said he'd done those things which was evil in the sight of the Lord. Josiah's father, a man by the name of, of King Amon, died at the hand of his own officers. Second Chronicles 33 says that uh, Amon did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord, as did Manasseh, his father. And so we realize that Josiah's father and grandfather were not somebody spiritually that he could look up to. He didn't have that. And yet he still took the throne at eight years old. Uh, they, they, they killed uh, uh, the citizens, formed uh, a group, and they, and they took uh, Ammon out. And here is where Josiah, at eight years old, came to the throne. Eight years old. I can't imagine that. I can't imagine my son, my son, taking a throne right now. I can't imagine that. He's not, he's not mature enough. I mean, he, I mean, he, he don't. He has, some, has to have somebody get him up in the morning and help him get dressed and get him out of door for school. He's not old enough to make rational decisions. But yet, the Bible says that Josiah was eight years old when he began to reign. I'm pretty sure that there was uh, those that he had uh, uh, with him, and evidently he had some good uh, people that surrounded him. And uh, I like what Josiah did. The Bible says that early on. In the reign of Josiah, he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord. He made a brave choice. The Bible says that he walked in the way of David, his father, turned not aside to the right hand or to the left. That says David, his father. Now, if you look at the lineage of David, and you go back and look at the kings, uh, Josiah here, uh, I'll have to go back and look. I did not put it in my notes. But Josiah here was several generations. I forget which king he was, but he was probably somewhere between 14, 15, 16 generations. He was way on down the line from David. But David was that king that everybody knew of. And so Josiah... I can't help but think that when he took the throne, somewhere there in the early part of it, he began to look back in his past. And I don't know, my wife has always been one that was great. Uh, she's a scrapbooker. And uh, before we started having a lot of kids, she kept a lot of scrapbooks. And, and uh, she, you, she's she got some of them now you can go back through. And it's just amazing. She was always good at that. But I kind of wonder sometimes, I know they probably didn't have scrapbooks back then, but you wonder if Josiah got to looking back in the history and he found somebody worthy 
of, of emulation. Uh, he, he skipped over his dad. Well, I can't look at, at, at my daddy, Amon, because his life was, was, he didn't follow after God. And I can't look at, at Grandpa Manasseh because Manasseh was an evil and a bloody king. And so Josiah began to go back in the time. He skipped over Amon and Manasseh, over Ahaz and Uzziah, and over Amaziah and, and Jehoram and, and many other kings until he found David and he decided, I'm going to be a man after God's own heart. I'm going to be a man that follows after the right way. Josiah saw himself and he saw his nation in light of the word of God. He saw how far they had drifted. So the first thing he did, he said, I'm going to have a rededication. Amen. We're not following the ways that we should be following. We're not walking after the ways of God that we should be walking. So I'm going to rededicate myself. I'm going to get things right. After that, amen, there came repentance, amen, and after that they came a uh, reformation, and then after that, amen, amen, there were some things that happened, he began to go back, now if you want to read about this, I encourage you sometime, don't do it right now, uh, but you can go on into chapter 23, and you can read about the things that Josiah began to do, how he began to cleanse the temple, how he began to, to destroy all of the idol worship and all the things that he did, he began to put away people in the kingdom that were practicing the occult. And I'm just going to use this for a phrase. I can't prove Josiah said it exactly like this, but I can just imagine as he walked through and he seen the devastation and he seen the mess and he seen the idol of worship and he seen all the things that went against the, uh, the word of God because the Bible says that Josiah found the book of the Lord and when he read it, the Bible says he rent his clothes when he realized that all of this time through several generations that they had not been following the right way. They had not been living according to the way that God commanded them. And so Josiah said, you know what? This thing of, of, of bloodiness, this thing of, of being an idol worshiper, of getting things between me and God, it might have ran in my family, but it stops with me. Amen. This thing might have ran in my family until it ran into me, but it's going to stop with me. I'm not going to allow it to go any further. I know there were some great kings of Israel if you go back, but you can look back through the kings uh, and realize that there were a lot of wicked kings. Some of them even said, or one of them said that he followed after the Lord, but not with a pure heart. In other words, he didn't give everything to God. He did not sell himself out to God. And so I'm just going to tell you, there's a, there's a word I mentioned here a few minutes ago that we don't hear a lot about today, and it's the word called repentance. Amen. It means to have sorrow for past sin or sorrow for sin. In the New Testament, it means to change uh, your mind or it means a change of mind that results in a change of action. And that is exactly what happened to Josiah. He realized that I've got to change some things if I expect my future to be better than my past. Amen. How many people here this morning want your future to be better than your past? Amen. I believe we can all say that, don't we? We want things to be better. There's times that I see my children and I realize that what they're heading into is a whole different world than what I walked into. And the world that I walked into was a whole different world than what my parents walked into. And the one that my parents walked into was a whole different world than my grandparents. I'm talking about generations. I'm talking about things that plague us from our past, friend. And the only thing, the one main thing that I really want for my children is I want them to be better than I ever was. What do you mean by that? Well, in the natural, I want to see them succeed in life. I want them to see them have a good college education and they're well on their way to that. I want to see them grow up and be good, productive citizens of society and they're well on their way to that. But more importantly, I want to see that they've been cleansed by the blood of Jesus and they're walking in the way that mama and daddy walked. They're walking in the way that grandma and grandpa walked. They're walking in the way that great grandma and great grandpa walk. I can say that for my lineage. Uh, some people can't say that for theirs. Uh, but I want to let you know something this morning. Uh, if there's things in your past, uh, if there's traits in your family, uh, if there's things that have always hindered you, uh, it does not have to continue, uh, but it can run into you and stop with you, uh, and it can change from that point uh, 
and forevermore uh, you can be different. Uh, I know a good man this morning, a uh, great friend of mine, I look up to him, uh, a mentor if you please, uh, and he'll tell you, he said, I come from a family, uh, they were fighters, they couldn't have a family reunion uh, unless a fist fight broke out. They were just fighting at each other all the time. Uh, and you know what happened to him? Uh, oh, after all that generation uh, of people that weren't living for God, uh, bootleggers and, and, and rebels and, and, and carriers, uh, you know what happened? He found God. Uh, and you know what happened when he found God? Uh, God saved him. Uh, God saved his wife. Uh, God, gave it, uh, God called him to preach. Uh, and not only did God call him to preach, uh, but now his son is a preacher. Uh, his grandsons are preachers. Uh, and they're all and became a judge of Israel and was inducted into the Hebrews 11 Hall of Faith. Yes. It was the sons of Korah who lived down their father's reputation as a rebel and a church troublemaker. Eleven of the Psalms were written after them. It was a higher that lived down the reputation of his entire family. He was the son of a priest named Ahitub who happened to be the brother of Ichabod in the lineage of Phineas and Eli. And the Bible says he was the Lord's priest in Shiloh. After all that mess, there was a man that said it might have ran in my family to be opposite of God, but it stops with me. Hallelujah. When you become a Christian, it's no more you that lives, uh, but Christ that lives in you. Did you hear me? Uh, I said when you become a Christian, uh, it's no more you that lives, uh, but Christ that lives in you. Uh, your family tree might be full of knot holes, uh, but you can be the fruitful branch. Uh, I said it might be full of dead wood uh, and messed up stuff, uh, but you can be the branch that is fruitful. Uh, failure? Sure. Tragedy? Yep. Reproach? I guarantee it. But it don't have to be you. I said it don't have to be you. Oh, help me, Holy Ghost. It does not have to be you. I think we need some people this morning uh, that just says, you know what? It uh, might have been a curse in my family, uh, but I'm going to be the curse breaker. Yes. It's going to stop with me. You will talk about cursed families? Uh, you ever get a time doing research on the Kennedy family and look at all the curses that went down all the way from Joseph Kennedy uh, to Ted, to John, to JFK, and JFK Jr., and all the plane crashes and all the car wrecks and the murders and everything that happened? It's a mess. Uh, but you know what? Uh, you might can say the same thing. You might say in my family's past uh, is a past of mess, uh, but I'm going to be the curse breaker. Uh, I'm a warrior. I'm a child of the Most High and the generational curse. Child 
promise and example. Did you know that? Yes. Yeah. That was a, a missionary. I've told this story before, real briefly. Uh, Brother Don Rich was over in Panama and told about the young boy that was involved in that house and grandparents and and you know they all lived kind of together on those islands. Uh, so that little boy come that to that service uh, and said he got saved uh, and, and got filled with the Holy Ghost and the Lord gave him power and he went back and he told his, his granddaddy he said we can't worship that aisle that's on the wall anymore we can't worship after that aisle it can't do nothing I met Jesus uh, and said his granddaddy I'm going to make the story real short because you've heard it probably said his granddaddy said son uh, if you're strong enough to take that aisle off the wall uh, you take it off but don't forget if you take that aisle off the wall uh, and break his arms or break his legs uh, or destroy it that I will break your arms and break your legs and destroy you. But said the power of God come on that young man. He ripped that aisle off the wall and he threw it on the ground uh, and commanded his family to worship the true God, uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, he was determined uh, that the curse would stop with him. Uh, he was determined that he would be the one that would be the turning point uh, in his family. Uh, I need some this morning to realize uh, and be honest with yourself uh, and say I'm going to be the turning point. Uh, oh, if you're single Amazing how it all works. Last year, when the Lord laid this, literally laid this, He laid that phrase on my heart. One day I was, I was working and I was praying. And I was praying about some friends of mine, some homes, and, and uh, the Lord laid it on my heart. He said, It might have ran in their family. It could stop them from running to them. And uh, I began to do some research, and it just so happened. That literally that same day that I come across a poll on social media, P-O-L-L, -L, poll, where people get advice. And it was from a site that, that we have looked at several times that deals with marriage and couples and it's got some good advice and you had to weed through some of that. But the poll that they asked that day, they asked this question, what are some generational problems that have been passed down through your family and what have you done about them? And I thought that was interesting. How many people want to admit and just stand up and say, well, in my family, there was a history of this, 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 this. Some people will, some people won't. I understand that. And as I looked at that, there was over 300 comments on that. And I said, wow. And I began to read through some of them. I'm going to give them to you this morning. Give me just a few more minutes here. Yes. Two-faced backstabbing. All on my mom's side. Very hurtful. Seems just for spite. A way of life I was becoming oblivious to. Senseless argument. The sadly stole precious family time. Driven by jealousy. Here was another one. Alcoholism and dysfunctional family relationships ended with me. Praise God for healing and deliverance. Here's another one. Sweeping issues under the rug. Yes, that ended with me. A festering history of unresolved issues is the root for bitterness, anger, unforgiveness, and destruction. Here's another one. Not taking responsibility for my actions or behavior. Guilt tripping and manipulation. Here's another one. I was born in a racist family, but after meeting Jesus Christ and accepting him as my Savior on July the 31st, 1991, he delivered me and set me free to him be the glory and honor forever and ever. Here's another one. Professing Christ, but not living biblically for him. Here's another one. I was the first believer in four generations. Verbal, emotional, mental abuse. I was yelling at my two and a half year old daughter. I caught my reflection in a mirror. I looked into her teary, frightened little face and remembered how I felt confusion, fear, and guilt. I got her on my knees to her level, looked in her eyes and asked her to forgive me. We wiped each other's tears away. I felt as if a destructive cycle that had haunted me from several generations had been broken. Praise be to God that he spoke to me that day. My daughter is now 21 years old. We have an amazing relationship. All glory to God. Here's 
another one. Narcissism, passive aggressive behavior, emotional abuse, addiction, rejection, low self-esteem, physical, mental, and emotional health. Here's another one. My dad died of cancer from drinking and smoking. My husband's dad died in a bar fight, shot in the head. We, by the grace of God, will not drink alcohol or smoke. I never want my children to see us drunk or with a cigarette in our hands. I try to tell people it only starts with one drink, one joint, or one cigarette. Just starts with one. Here's another one. Toxic parenting, favoritism, child abuse, spouse abuse, toxic relationship, alcoholism, sexual abuse, unmanageable debt, ignoring health problems, secrecy, the inability to apologize, not saying I love you to my children, bitterness, and hate. Here's another one. Addiction, immorality, being the victim of abuse, divorce, depression, dissatisfaction, divorce, alcohol, dysfunctional child relationships, abuse, selfishness, adultery. That was just a snippet of 300 and some comments that come in that day when asked about generational curses. And I know some of that stuff people's, people would probably look at, oh, that don't go on in my family. You need to be honest and realize uh, that you don't need to stand up and tell that stuff sometimes to the entire church. Uh, but there is an altar at the front of this church that you can kneel down and tell it all to God and let God heal your heart, let him heal your mind, let him turn you around, uh, let him do something inside of you. Uh, that man said can't be done. Uh, people say the power of God uh, is hogwash. Uh, they say it's not real. Uh, I beg to differ with you, friend. Uh, there's enough power uh, in the blood of Jesus Christ uh, to change you and completely turn you around. Uh, people say that's just the way my family is. Uh, that's just the way they are. Uh, that's just the way I was raised. Uh, I'm going to tell you something. Uh, when God saved me uh, and we didn't deliver me, uh, he would deliver the rulers out of me. Uh, he delivered the head out of the hands. Uh, he delivered the pocket out of the pockets. Uh, what happens when I come to God? Uh, I become a new creature. Uh, all things are passed away. Uh, behold, everything uh, has become new. Uh, it might have ruined my family, uh, but it does not have to continue. Hey. You can be the one to change That's right. the direction of your entire family. Josiah didn't just change direction. He changed an entire nation. Come, Sister Ashley, give me a song. I'm going to try to close this up this morning. I can preach for quite a while about this. I want to let somebody know this morning, you don't have to be played by the past generational hiccups that your family has been played with. Amen. Maybe your past ain't much to brag about. Mine's not. Maybe you've seen evil in a great way. I have. I come from a large family. I told you the other night. I think, and I, I, don't, I don't even have the numbers in front of me now, but I think on my, my dad's side, or my, just, just my immediate family on my dad's side, from my grandpa, my dad's dad, from my grandpa, all the way down, uh, even those that have passed away, my grandpa and grandma's gone home, but in that immediate family, right now, I think there's in the neighborhood, uh, I don't know what I said, uh, 130, one something, I don't know, there's, there's well over 100 of us. Daddy had uh, 11 or 10 brothers and sisters, rather. My mama had seven on, mama's, on my mama's side. There's, there's a little over 100 on that side, I believe. I come from a large family. I love every one of my family. I can tell you something. I've had uncles this morning. Thank God that, 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 that they've had help over the years. I had an uncle that for years was gone from my aunt. He was strung out on meth. She was strung out on meth. She was in jail. And their kids had, at this point had got old enough, barely old enough, that they could live on their own. And, and, and if it wasn't for other family members and maybe grandparents, uh, no telling what would have happened. But you know what happened? Uh, after all that time, uh, my, aunt's back, uh, my, my aunt's out of jail and my uncle's back home uh, and they're all together. And I seen him the other week when I was down home. I went to the grocery store. He come around the corner. He just bear hugged me. Stood there and talked with him and he can't talk for five minutes without crying. He'll say, he'll say, somebody's praying for me. He said, because all of my family is back home and we're all together again. You know what happened? Uh, he realized that something had to change. Oh, I wish I could get somebody to realize this morning that something's got to change in your life. If I could get you to realize that something needs to change, uh, maybe just maybe you come this morning and let God do a work in your life. Uh, I said, maybe, just maybe, you get God a chance this morning. You've tried everything. You might have tried alcohol and drugs. You might have tried, tried, tried all the, the mess that this world's got to offer, friend. You might have tried all of that, but I'm here to tell you this morning, all that stuff does is divide and destroy. All those things do is mess up, but if you'll come to God, I promise you there's healing in the blood of Jesus. There's restoration in the blood of Jesus. There's deliverance in the blood of Jesus, uh, there is a healing.
understand. My wife begins to play this morning. All right. Begins to sing. You know, I can almost hear sometimes the beating heart of the surrender inside of someone. And if you lean in closely, you can hear them saying, if only. If only. If only I'd been born in another family. If only this hadn't happened in my life. If only I'd been born in a family that had more money or greater opportunities. You know what that word is? If only. That's a white flag of surrender. Surrendering to the enemy of your soul. You're saying, I give up. I can't do it. But let me tell you what the Bible says. John chapter 3 verse 6 says, That which is born of flesh is flesh. But that which is born of the Spirit. <laughs> that which is born of the Spirit is Spirit. Your family may have given you your genes, but God gives you grace. Your family may be responsible for your body and your attitudes, but God's in charge of your soul. You might get your looks from your mama, but if you'll come and get born again this morning, you can get eternity from your father, your heavenly father. It might have run in your family. It might be a trail of devastation left behind, but it can stop this day. Stand with me all over the house. Every head bowed, nobody looking around. Father, I love you today. Lord, I thank you, God, for your presence. Thank you for this word that you have laid on my heart. Lord, I pray today. Oh, God, I pray that there be one or two or five or ten that would say this morning, I'm not going to wave the white flag of if only. But I'm going to give it to God. I'm going to stand up and be a warrior and say that the things that plague my home will no longer plague my home. The things that burden my family will no longer burden my family. But it stops right now. And from this point on, my family will be a godly family. From this point on, I'll give my heart to God and I'll raise my children to know about the good things. I'll raise my children to know that there is a heaven uh, to Cain. Uh, I'll raise my children to know that there is a hell that they don't want to go to. I'll raise my family. Uh, I'll do my best to be the foundation and the standard in my family. Today, in Jesus' name. I'm calling to somebody. Calling to several somebody. I don't know. God dealing with your heart. You might say you were preaching to me this morning. Well, if I was preaching to you, I hope that you're going to let God deal with you and make a change about the thing that's going on. I hope you're going to let God deal with you and say, this thing's got to stop with me. The, the past has to stop with me, but the future must start with me. And I'm talking to you this morning. It's God dealing with you. And you want to come this morning and talk to the Lord about it. You don't have to tell me about it. You ain't got to tell nobody next to you. But you can talk to God and let God help you with the problems that you're faced with in life right now. How about it, friend? Is the Lord dealing with your heart this morning? Do you want to come today and say it might have ran in my family, but it ran into me and it stops right now? How about it this morning? How about it? Is God dealing with you? Oh, why don't you step out this morning and come give your heart to God. Come on. Why don't you step out and let God heal you this morning. Why don't you step out this morning and let God do a work inside of you.